Welcome back to The Science Basement, your source for videos that are entertaining and educational. Hi, this is Nate from The Science Basement. I love drones, and in fact I've been a drone pilot for the last six years. I've done this professionally as part of my work as a scientist in agriculture, and I love sharing my passion of drones with others, especially my children. But one of the things I've really struggled with, with introducing new people to drones, and in particularly my children, was in finding drones that were user-friendly, inexpensive, that wouldn't break the first time you use them. And so I've been looking for a few years to find the right drone for the right price that would help me do this, and introduce my kids and introduce others that I work with to drones. I'm sure like many of you, I was gifted or maybe you gifted to somebody else an RC helicopter and you know they, they look great and they seem like they'll be a good gift, but the, the problem is the first time that you use them or anyone else uses them, they just seem to self-destruct. The main issue with those is that the controllers don't seem to work well, there's no altitude hold so they don't just you know, hover in place, you always have to be uh, keeping your thumb on the altitude and trying to control it that way. And since the rotors are completely unprotected, the first time you run into a wall or the ceiling or the floor, they just get broken, which is really frustrating for a first time user or someone that's really trying to get into drones and is especially discouraging for kids. And in fact, that's what happened to uh, my own son. For this, this past Christmas, we purchased a, a little inexpensive uh, RC helicopter to introduce him. The first day that he flew it, uh, on Christmas Day in fact, it was just completely destroyed after a few attempts of, of trying to fly. Uh, after that experience, I promised him that I would do some research, find uh, a new drone that we could replace that with, and one that would be more reliable and that would be more fun to use and introduce him to flying drones. And so after doing some research, I settled on purchasing the Snaptane H823H which is a great looking little drone. The first thing that I was really drawn to in purchasing this was that it's completely enclosed in a housing. So the rotors are protected. Um, that was the first thing that really stuck out to me, something that, that seemed like it would be more durable, wouldn't break the first time it was used. The plastic itself was a little bit flexible. So uh, even though our kids have flown it into the wall, into the ceilings, even at, at full speed, it's had no damage. We've had this for six months. There's some scuffs and scratches on it. Uh, but there's no cracks, uh, they w still work just as well as they did when we first purchased them. Um, so that's, that's a great sign for these. And I gotta tell you that this drone is, is awesome. The, when we received it and my son flew it, um, and I had a turn flying it as well, um, I loved it so much that I actually went ahead and purchased a second one for my other son, who's a, who's a couple years younger. But, but since it was so user-friendly and uh, indestructible, I thought it would be a great little drone for him to use as well. Um, and I've been tempted to buy one for myself because they're, they're really a lot of fun. It comes in a little under $30, which is a, a really great deal. About the same price as those RC helicopters I mentioned before. Now, the final thing that I really like about this uh, particular drone is the controller. It is, a, it is a more inexpensive controller. It's pretty simple, just plastic. But what I really like about it is that it uses the same control layout that you would see in a more uh, you know, professional grade drone, something like from DJI. When you look at the controller to take off, uh, there is a button to take it off. You can, you can push this button on the side, or you can also push these two joysticks into the center, just like you would on a, on a DJI drone. Um, that will uh, allow it to take off, to increase in altitude, uh, this is left joystick, you can go up uh, and then decrease in altitude, altitude, go down. To control the yaw, you can push the left hand controller to the left or right to spin the drone or to yaw the drone to the left and right. And then to go forward and backward and side to side is the right hand controller. So very similar layout to the DJI's. There's also some trim control. This does not have, have GPS built in, so sometimes there can be just a little bit of drift, and if, if you notice drift either to the left or the right or forward or backward, there is some trim controls that you can push these, these buttons and, and adjust that and help it hover more in place. Some other really cool features about this is it does have a return to home, so you can push this button, it'll come back to you. And then also a headless mode, which basically means um, that as the drone is flying, if, if the headless mode is activated, no matter how the drone is oriented, so whether that's uh, towards you or away from you, it knows the orientation that it took off from. So if you push the controller forward, it'll move forward, even if it's you know side to side or back, it'll always uh, move in, in that direction. It's a good feature for beginners, 
but overall, not something that I, I typically recommend because I do think it is, it's really useful. And one of the things I really like about this particular drone um, and introducing new users to, to flying drones is using it in a way that a nicer, more expensive drone like a DJI would, which is that you have to always kind of understand the orientation of the drone in, in relation to you. So in terms of operating this drone, it's pretty simple. The first step is to turn the drone itself on. You, you'll get a little blinking light and then you go ahead and turn on the remote. Um, it will also blink. Every time that you fly, you have to pair the remote to the drone. And the one thing that I'll share to be careful of is since we do have two of these, this remote will actually pair to either drone. Um, so we've made the mistake before of our, our two boys trying to pair their drones at the same time and, and everything kind of getting a little bit tangled up. So you wanna make sure that if you do have multiple, that you do it one at a time. But after you do do that, it'll only be paired to that remote. You can go ahead and pair another one and they won't interfere with each other. So the way that you pair it is once you have both the drone and the controller on, you push the left stick forward, it'll beep, and then you go backward, and then it'll, the, the light on both the drone and the controller will change to solid instead of blinking. So now they're, they're connected. To take off, you can push this button here on the side, or you can take off the same as you would with a DJI drone, which is pushing these two controllers into the center. That's what I'm used to, uh, so that's what I typically do. I'm gonna go ahead and move some things here. We can go ahead and, and go ahead and take it off right now. So, and then it takes off. You notice there's a little bit of drift, so we can adjust that here with the trim control on the remote, um, which we can make sure that we get a nice uh, steady hover, and that looks pretty good. And then as soon as we're ready to land, all we need to do is push the down button. It'll go down, and then you just hold the, the down button. As soon as it hits a, a solid surface, it'll shut off the rotors and stop flying. So another way that you can take off this drone, which is more of a throw and go method. So if you're holding the drone steadily in your hand and it's paired with the remote, if you give it a, a little toss into the air, it will turn on and catch itself, which is another really unique and fun way to get this drone launched. The other really cool feature about this is that it can do flips, which is really fun. To do that, what you do is you push down the right hand remote, um, it'll beep, and then you'll push the direction you want it to flip. So it can, it can flip forward, it can flip backwards, and it can also flip side to side. Whichever direction uh, you push the, the right hand stick after de depressing it once. It needs a little bit of space to do that because it, it does uh, you know, have a, quite a bit of movement side to side or forward to backward and sometimes can kind of decrease uh, in altitude just a little bit. So something to be aware of. Usually you want to make sure that it has a clear space. There's no per people or, or other objects around you. You know, a few other notes with this drone, I, I would only recommend flying it indoors. It is very small and very lightweight. So it, flying it outdoors uh, is, is much more difficult. Since it is so small, it's really affected by the wind. Even, a, even just a very light breeze will really uh, get this drone to move in directions that you don't want it to. Since it doesn't have GPS, the drone has no way to know exactly where it is in space. It can be very easily lost over a fence or on top of somebody else's house in a tree. So I, I would recommend that this drone only be flown indoors. I would say this is probably one of the best drones you can buy for under $30. Um, one, it's, it's durable. Uh, it has a great control in terms of understanding uh, the drone. It has altitude control. So thanks again for tuning into the Science Basement. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you. If you like this video and it's helpful for you in, in terms of deciding on a beginner drone, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for notifications on future content. I'm always working on science videos, experiment ideas, but also technology videos like this uh, about uh, drones and other technology that I'm really excited about.